Hello, we are in beautiful Beirut, Lebanon for the World Allergy Organization 2019 WIS Conference that is co-sponsored by the World Allergy Organization and the Lebanese Society of Allergy and Immunology. Over the past three days, we have had a wonderful conference with the latest cutting edge developments in allergy and immunology. And here with me today is one of the prestigious speakers from that conference, Dr. Larry Suarez. And he will be sharing with us some of the key findings from one of his presentations. Dr. Swartz, what topic have you chosen to share with us today? Well, I'd like uh, to tell you about uh, primary mast cell disorders, because this is something that I've been studying for several decades. And, uh, and I think there have been some new developments in that field that are of interest to practicing allergists. So, in that field, what are the most recent new developments for diagnosing mast cell disorders, and then secondly, uh, for treatment of mast cell disorders? So there's really three disorders that, that I consider as primary mast cell disorders. So these aren't allergic diseases, these are disorders that's, that emanate from problems with mast cells. The first is mast cell activation syndrome, the second is systemic mastocytosis, and the third is hereditary alpha-tryptosemia. So if you were giving advice and sending a key message to primary care physicians and allergists about those disease states, what would you tell them on how to differentiate those three diseases? So for mast cell activation syndrome, which can be either clonal or non-clonal, you first have to have re recurrent episodes of systemic anaphylaxis. So that means you have the, uh, the, the episodes have to meet our criteria, just like allergen-induced anaphylaxis, where people have uh, uh, concurrent signs and symptoms in at least two of the four organ systems, lung, skin, GI, and cardiovascular. They need to have an, an elevation acutely during these symptoms compared to baseline of a mast cell mediator and we talked about the different uh, mediators available commercially and, um, and that um, tryptase is probably the most specific. Others might be more sensitive but lack the specificity that uh, serum tryptase levels have. So we talked about how to measure that in the acute and baseline levels and then to determine whether these events respond to anti-mast cell or mediator therapy and whether any of the genes associated with mast cell activation syndrome, the genetic defects, are present. And that can be either an activating CKID mutation, the same ones that are present in systemic mastocytosis, but these patients don't meet the other criteria for systemic mastocytosis, or the newly described uh, uh, genetic disease, an autosomal dominant hereditary disease called hereditary alpha-tryptosemia, where, um, which is caused by a copy number variant uh, in the alpha tryptase gene. And a number of these patients have recurrent episodes of, of anaphylaxis um, that can be diagnosed just like the, um, the, the, the mast cell activation syndrome that I've been telling you about. And I know some physicians out there are probably wondering, what is the latest research on the connection between mast cell disorder and venom hypersensitivity? Well, so one of the ways that systemic mastocytosis can present is somebody who has a systemic reaction to uh, an, an insect sting um, because they're allergic to the venom but because they have too many mast cells that might also be hyperactivatable by the, this venom when they're allergic, they have the most severe systemic allergic reaction. So anyone who has a severe systemic allergic reaction to an insect venom, system, underlying systemic mastocytosis should be considered. Other presentations might be osteoporosis with, um, uh, that's otherwise unexplained or pathologic fractures, that's another way that they can pr present. Um, and also the classical pattern with uh, urticaria pigmentosa, a rash on the skin that has that uh, fancy derriere sign. When you scratch the skin through one of the lesions, the lesion urticates, but not the non-lesional skin. 
And so if you were provided with an unlimited budget, five million or greater, to do research in the area of mast cell and mast cell disorders, where would you devote that money over the next five years? Well, I have a long history of studying tryptase. And it's been unclear up till now what tryptase might be doing functionally or pathologically. But this disease that uh, has been recently described by a group at NIH called hereditary alpha tryptosemia seems to be related to overexpression of, of, of a tryptase. And so I would like to understand um, how tryptase is causing these clinical manifestations, which are very unusual for a mast cell disease, but they include um, hyperextensibility of joints, a very unusual type of urticaria called vibratory urticaria, and dysautonomia with um, uh, uh, GI uh, hypomotility leading to irritable bowel syndrome and episodes of constipation or with bacterial overgrowth, diarrhea, uh, or POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, sometimes with hypotension and lightheadedness and even syncable episodes can occur due to the dysautonomia occurring in this syndrome. So I would like to know how overexpression of tryptase relates to these clinical manifestations and then to decide, even in the absence of this disease, could that explain um, uh, disorders in these areas uh, even with a normal tryptase genotype? So it sounds like we have a lot to still learn about that disease and, and the effect it has on patients. Thank you so much, Larry, for sharing with us that information today. Thank you, Dan.